established in the year 1958, IIT Bombay, whom we fondly know as IIT B, was one of the first IITs to be established in India. In the year 1961, the IITs were given the status of institution of national importance, which vested in them the power to provide degrees. Like all the other IITs, even IIT Bombay was established with the purpose of developing and imparting technical knowledge. And this is precisely the reason that whenever we think about an IIT, the only subject that comes to our mind is engineering. But with 65 years of its establishment, IIT B, like many other older IITs, has increased its scope much beyond technical education. It actually provides education in almost all possible important subjects that we can think about. By now, you must have already guessed that we are going to talk about IIT Bombay. And since I'm your one and only PhD mentor, advisor and trainer, we are going to talk about the PhD program or the PhD being offered by IIT Bombay. We are going to discuss in this video what are the subjects in which IIT Bombay offers a PhD program. We will also discuss the qualification or the eligibility which is required to apply in this program. We will further talk about whether IIT offers a part-time PhD or a full-time PhD. That means the category of applications. Also, what is the admission process? and any other and many other details about PhD from this prestigious institute. So let us start. With this, we start our first section in which we are going to discuss with you the subjects or the areas which are offered by IIT for a PhD program. Remember, this entire video has been made after studying in detail the brochure, the PhD brochure of IIT and all the information related to PhD which is given on IIT's website and its various school websites. Okay, so sharing with you a chart where we have mentioned the names of the areas in which PhD is being offered in IIT from engineering to science to mathematics, humanities, social sciences, public policy, AI and decision sciences, biotechnology, education and technology, from mathematics to economics, nanotechnology, and so on. Almost all possible areas of education are being offered under the PhD program of IITB. And remember, these are very broad areas. Under each areas, we have sub areas and multiple subjects which are being offered. Hasn't IIT increased the scope of its education massively, as I had mentioned in the introduction? Okay, once we know what are the areas, let us move on to our section number two, where I'm going to discuss what qualifications you require to apply in this prestigious program. So the most important eligibility to apply for a PhD program in IIT is either a master's or a BTEC with 60% marks. Besides this, if you want to apply for the fellowship, if you want to get a fellowship from IIT, then you need to qualify some kind of eligibility exam like UGC NET, GATE, CAT, GRE, GMAT, GEST. Which eligibility exam you should qualify would depend on the subject and the area that you are applying into. Besides this, if you are looking forward for a part-time PhD in IIT, then you require at least two years of experience. Remember, even IIT follows the UGC guidelines of providing 5% relaxation to all reserved categories. Besides this, in certain departments, art and commerce students have also been given a 5% relaxation. This is all about the eligibility. From here, we move on to the next most important part of this video whether PhD is being offered in part-time mode or only in full-time mode and in which category can you apply into. IIT offers both part-time and full-time PhD and there are multiple categories of both full-time and part-time 
where a student can apply for PhD. So for your easy understanding, we've created a table here. As you can see in the table, the first four columns represent the variety or the kind of full-time PhD being offered by IIT. And the last column, which is in orange, represents the part-time PhD categories. So the first column here is related to full-time PhD with its institutional fellowship. So if you join as a teaching assistantship or as research assistantship, then you will be joining in full-time mode and you will be getting an institutional assistantship or institutional fellowship that is IIT would be giving you a fellowship. This fellowship usually varies from 31,000 rupees to 39,000 rupees in a span of five years. From here, we move on to the next category, which are full-time scholars getting a fellowship from the government or from corporate. The third category are full-time scholars which do not get any fellowship. Rather, these come as sponsored candidates or they can also join as a full-time candidate in self-finance mode. The fourth category relates to the foreign nationals. So international students have to join a PhD program in IITB only as a full-time candidate. They can join in self-finance mode or they can be sponsored or they can get a scholarship from their own nation's country's government. The last column relates to the part-time candidate. So here CT represents quality college teachers. So if you're a professor or a teacher, you can join as a part-time candidate in the CT category and all the other professionals can join in the external PhD category. So here are the various category of PhD being offered in part-time and in full-time mode by IITB. From here, we move on to the next section where we are going to discuss the process of PhD admission in this prestigious institution. PhD admission process starts by matching your eligibility with that which is required by IIT. Once you've matched your eligibility, once you have chosen your research area, then the next most important step would be to write a research proposal and an SOP. IITB has very clearly stated that it requires an SOP in the application. So when you're filling up the application form, you will have to upload an SOP. But there are certain departments which required a research proposal instead of an SOP. And there are certain departments which require both an SOP and an research proposal. And since IIT allows you to apply into three different areas at the same time in the same application process, there are high chances that you will have to end up writing both an SOP and a research proposal. In case any one of you is wondering what exactly is an SOP and research proposal, then probably you've not seen our previous video, which we had dedicated to both these important documents, sharing with you the link of this video in the eye above. Still, uh, if any one of you requires some guidance, some personal mentoring as to how these two documents are written, then you can always get in touch with me, your one and only PhD mentor for a personalized guidance session on how to write a professional SOP and research proposal. Once you've written these, both these documents, then you can fill up the online application form, submit the required application fee and wait for your shortlisting. Uh, IIT may or may not take an entrance examination. It will depend on the number of scholars that they have applied or on other criteria of shortlisting. But yes, IIT will definitely, definitely take a VIVA, which would again be based on your SOP and research proposal. This is all about the PhD process of IIT. I hope you did find the video informative. In case you still have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Do let us know if you want more videos on different IITs or IIMs and other institutes. We will love to create videos for you. With this, we come to the end of our video. Let us know how did you like it. 
if you did find it informative and if you would like us to create more videos like this on different institutes and universities please do let us know your thoughts your questions in the comment section below if you are liking what we are doing to empower you with genuine in-depth and well-researched information then please 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 do subscribe to our channel share our videos and don't forget to like and comment on them thank you so much for watching my video